Hey YouTube, it's Cash. Today I'm going to show you how to make a resonant speaker out of a china symbol, and then I'll demo it in a handful of different ways. The story behind this starts with the fork I use in my Fork Your Pedal videos. I just debuted the first of those, so go check that out if you haven't yet. The work of Rodrigo Constanzo inspired me to try to incorporate some transducers with my fork mod, so I acquired a bunch of different types to experiment with. I'll put a link to Rodrigo's channel below so you can see what he does with them. Then Heimbach put out a video featuring a gong amp by EOWAVE called the Metallic Resonator. I then realized I already had everything to make one, but I also wanted to try something different. A china symbol seemed like a logical option. The shape is also speaker-like. I had one with a very dark sound that I thought would be interesting. You can really make a speaker out of anything this way, so you can use whatever you think would sound cool. I was originally going to position the speaker perpendicular to the floor, like a typical guitar amp, but I found that it choked the sound a bit, so facing it up seemed to make the most sense, and I could place objects on the speaker to change the sound. This leads to a whole other chapter of experimentation. I also found that attaching magnets to both sides can be used to modify the overtones. The options are endless. This is the transducer exciter I used. Note that it's 10 watts. There are many options, but I'm going to show you a combination that works. I wanted my speaker to be able to handle a stereo signal or two mono signals. I know this seems counterintuitive, but you'll soon see that it makes sense, and I can still just use one channel if I want to. I wanted my amp to have a touch of character, so I used a realistic SA10 12 watt solid state stereo amplifier. I chose this for a few different reasons. It's 6 watts per channel, so I can crank it without distorting the 10 watt exciters. The amp has independent volume controls for the left and right channels which I use like a two channel mixer. There's a tone control and phono inputs can be used for some distortion. No matter what you end up using, I strongly encourage that you experiment with the position of the exciters. You have to use your ear. For me, placing them near the edge, directly across from each other, I think worked best in this application. These peel and stick so they're super easy to attach. In these demos I'm focusing on the experiment, not the music. I'm still having fun, but there's intention behind the waves and frequencies I'm using. I want to see how the symbol responds. In the next few, I'm using the Bebot app with my iPad and iPhone. Bebot checks all the boxes with waveforms, tunings, and a bit of effects. I can use both devices to create a match pair for experimenting with the stereo inputs. First I'm going to send a mono signal through both channels. The waves clash and adds a bit of distortion which would be welcome in some situations. I use my iPad and iPhone to make a match pair and input one into the right channel and the other into the left. You'll notice that there's more clarity and less clashing.
this one, the setup is the same, but I'm going to play with the harmonics. You'll hear some interesting resonance. Now I'll add some objects so you can hear what that can do. I'll use a riveted junk symbol, an aluminum dome, and a snare chain. I would typically combine this with a direct signal, but I really want you to hear the symbol by itself.
now I will play a Univox drum machine and remove the objects I have on the cymbal one at a time so you can hear how they affect the sound. For the last example, you're going to get a glimpse of what you'll see in the next episode. My circuit bent drum sync storm. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that. I'm pairing that with a hungry robot sequencer and an Akai drum wolf. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.